Hey guys, John here from the Reaper blog. Today we're going to be looking at some basic video transitions you can do really easily in Reaper. Yes, you can edit video in Reaper. I've done probably close to 250 videos. All my videos are done in Reaper now. The transitions I'll show you are dissolve, fade to black, slides, and dip to white. So first let's look at our footage and see what we have. Uh, I got a music track here. I've got some cuts that are on the beat some of the ambient audio from these clips. We're not hearing these three clips here. I have the audio disabled on those tracks. So here we go. Okay, so those are our three clips. And right now we're using jump cuts or no transition. Most of the time, you're going to be using jump cuts, and if you're editing to music, they're going to be on the beats, and it's going to work. You generally use transitions when you want to show time passing or locations changing. But in the event that we want to use the transition, it's pretty simple to do. I have these clips overlapped a bit. We're only seeing whatever the top video layer is. That's what goes to the video output. So uh, we're going to insert the video processor on the track. Now for this, you can use the track opacity zoom pan preset, or you can use my preset JT essential video controls. I prefer to use this one because it just has kind of everything that you need. The other one doesn't have crop controls. So uh, that's one of the reasons why I would use it. And what we're going to do is change the opacity. So we just move this. Essentially, we want this to go down to zero. And somewhere in between, we're going to be seeing both uh, images at the same time. So a dissolve is when we fade from one image to another, and throughout that process, we see both images at the same time. Uh, now we've, we've touched that parameter, we can add that to the track. Click on the param button in the video processor and show track envelope. So we're just going to put in a point here at the start of our transition, basically where the start of our video underneath uh, starts. And then we go to the end of the clip and we put in a point. So the end of the first clip, we put in a point there. So the opacity is zero. And now uh, this track is the active one. We're going to do the same thing at the end while we're at it. So same process in reverse. Put a point there at the beginning, one at the end. Go from zero to one. And then we can adjust the curve. First, let's see what it looks like with the linear curve. It's about a one second transition. So let's see that. And that's fine. What I like better if I'm doing a dissolve is to right click, set point shape. I like slow start end, which looks like this. I think that's a little more natural. It's slow at the start, quick throughout the middle, and then slow at the end. You can also alt drag this to customize the curve. So very slow, the first part of the transition and then very quick towards the end or the opposite. This one's probably gonna work a little bit better. Or you could just do kind of a, a regular kind of exponential curve there. Either way, I, I think the linear curve doesn't quite work right for visual effects. So slow start and end is what I tend to use. So that's the first method of doing a dissolve. There is another one. So let's bypass this plugin. So now this is not active anymore. Put in a second instance of video processor and we'll go to the built-in preset item fades effect video. What this does is use the items fades to control the opacity, which is pretty cool, but there are some potential problems with it. In use, it's as simple as dragging the item's top corner um, or overlapping two items on one track, and I'll show you that in a second. Um, but we're just going to put in a fade there. We'll put in a fade here. Once again, this automation lane is not in use right now. We're just looking at this. This preset is going to be using the item's fade. So let's look at that. A 
really simple way to do fades. The problem comes in when you are using the audio inside of this item, or you're using audio attached to the video clip, um, which gets its own volume adjustments. So basically the item volume on the item, item volume on the item, this one, is going to make your videos darker, but not lighter. So keep that in mind. If it's anything below zero dB, it's gonna start making your video darker. Let's grab this item, drag it up here so it crossfades, and just show you how simple it is when you're doing it on the same track. This is going to be the exact same effect, but we're using overlapping items with crossfades um, and this item fades effect video preset. That's cool and all, but just look, if we, uh, if I'm going to bring in the audio again on this track. So let's say we use the take volume envelope on this to reduce the volume of this uh, wind noise. We'll just draw in a little curve like this to get rid of that wind noise and play it back. And not only did it not get rid of the wind noise, it made our video get darker randomly. So I don't recommend using the item fades. Even though it's quick, you're probably going to spend more time fighting with it than um, enjoying the simplicity of it. So let's get rid of that. Go back to doing automation the way you're supposed to. And I'm just going to drag this back down to its own track. All right, so that's two ways to do the dissolve transition. Now let's do a dip to black. And essentially we just change the opacity down to the zero point, and we also leave in a gap. So a dip to black is, let's say we just put in a, a small gap here. We'll keep this transition point or this edit point here. I'll, I'll put a marker there just so we know where it is. So um, we want a fade out. Let's go from here to here. And we'll just put in a, a point there. It'll be a few frames and then it'll come into the next video. We'll put in a nice curve here for that. So here we go. Right? Fade to black. It kind of blinks in as it jumps into the next video. And we could even refine that so that this one comes in kind of slowly um, in the, the exact same way as that. If we did it on the same track, it's the same process. Just do that. Give it a nice curve like this. And this is a good effective technique for showing time passing. It could also be used for dramatic effects. So like uh, you'll see it in trailers all the time. So there will be, be a big bass drop and the video will kind of blink and then another one, a riser comes in and there's another explosion and it blinks out and all this kind of stuff. Uh, so that's another effective one. It's very simple. It's just, again, opacity change. Dipping down to blank or black video. If the opacity is all the way down, you don't have to leave in this gap. Next, let's get rid of these uh, automation points for the opacity and let's just get rid of that. All right, so we're getting rid of the opacity change and we're going to do a slide transition. So let's get this clip here. So right here, put in another marker. This is our transition area. And we're going to do a slide transition. Uh, let's do sliding to the left. So we'll take our horizontal position parameter here, which does this effect. When I move it, it moves the video over to the left. Now that I've touched that, it's going to be in the last touch parameter area, show track envelope, put in a point there, put in a point here. Let's start off with a linear curve, so it looks like this. 
And that's such a cheesy sort of like PowerPoint presentation slideshow kind of effect. It only rarely works uh, in film, I think, without drawing attention to itself. But anyways, once again, that was a linear curve. We set this to the slow start end. It looks like this. And I think that's the most tasteful way of using that, I guess. This technique can work really well if the camera's on a slider and it's going behind uh, some foreground element that takes up the entire frame. You can use that black area where, the, where something is being blocked out to have another scene come in. And that can be really effective. I don't have any footage that, would, that it would work with uh, to do a demo right now, but once you know that that's happening, you'll probably see it everywhere. So anyways, that's the sliding to the left. It's the same process if we want to slide to the right. So just bring that up at the end point. And you could do a slide up by using the uh, vertical, or we could do a crop. So let's do it with a left crop. So I'm taking that last touch parameter, show track envelope. So going from zero position up to one and line it up with our end point. Change that curve to something that looks right, something like this. And let's see how that goes. Right, so it's kind of a subtle difference. Instead of the video sliding over, it's actually being cropped. That uh, slider movement thing that I mentioned is most likely to be done with a crop. Moving your camera from left to right, once your camera gets to that foreground element, you would start cropping one of the edges to reveal a different scene or something like that, different location uh, behind it. You can make this more difficult if you want. If we wanted to crop the left and uh, the bottom at the same time, it would look like this. Just take this, take this, drag that up, put in a curve. And so now it's going to look like this. crops down to the corner. I, these kind of effects are really, they really draw attention to themselves. So use them sparingly. Yeah, so let's get rid of those. I'll show you one more transition and it's going to be very similar to the dip to black, only we're gonna dip to white. And again, there's multiple ways of doing this. Actually, I have an image saved somewhere. I think it's just called white. Yeah. So just a white image, I just drop that in here. So just a full screen white. And why do we need that? Because we're dipping to white. We'll take this clip, put it down here below the first clip, right there. We want to have the end point the same. And so we'll put this there, we'll go back to the Opacity change back in our video processor. So we we'll do this and we we'll do this. Show track envelope. We go from, where's my marker? Mark from this marker point down to here. And we'll do slow start end. And so now it's going to uh, dip down to the color white. or dissolve into a white image. And we could actually have that so that there's a few frames of pure white in there might help the effect. Makes sense? Hopefully. So you can do that with just dropping in some solid white background. You could generate a white rectangle using Reaper's video processor. You could really do that with any color. You could dip to any color you want there. So let's wrap this up, dissolve, fade to black, fade to white, and slide transitions. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon, and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.